Jonathan Young. Mr Speaker, what rubbish. What rubbish do we hear about their energy policies? In the last four years, the last four years of that government over there, power went up 27.9 per cent. In our first four years, 13.6 per cent. And we did a multi-billion dollar infrastructure upgrade in that period of time. And when I, when I asked them 5,000 jobs, where are they going to come from? He had nothing to say. And I think New Zealanders need to hear those sorts of speeches and the emptiness of them and that, they, that these people across the way who say they can do so much, yet when you look at it, when you look under the cover, there's nothing there to show. Right. Mr Speaker, this budget is a budget that will continue to take New Zealand forward. We know that. We know that. We know that this government is very proactive. We are seeing economic activity increase. We are seeing jobs increase, sir. We are seeing New Zealanders. We are seeing New Zealanders have the best cost of living situation in years and years and years. The lowest interest rates in decades. And, uh, Mr. Speaker, all they can do is hue and cry about what they are going to do, and we know that it's just puffery. It's empty. There's nothing that they can say that's going to make substantial improvements. Now, Mr Speaker, I want to just talk very briefly about communications. We know that this government is prioritising the, uh, the ultra-fast broadband build, and we know that we are going to see some significant improvements in our economy because of it. The World Bank analysis published in 2009 suggests that investment in broadband infrastructure has a higher flow through to nationwide productivity than any other area of electronic communication. What it says across a range of countries, this analysis shows that a 10 percentage point increase in telecommunications via broadband would be expected to in increase economic growth by between 1.2 and 1.4%. And so, so we know that we are living in an age Oh, listen to them. Come on, come on, come on, Trevor. Listen to them. We know, sir, that we live in this age where electronic communication via broadband, ultra-fast broadband, is going to make the difference. That we have New Zealand companies that can transact business across the globe. And we can see the ingenuity and innovation of this place, sir, uh, having great effect for our companies. And uh, I have to say that one of the first places, and Honourable Harry Dynhoven sitting up here, good to see you, sir, will acknowledge that New Plymouth was one of the first places that ultra-fast broadband was rolled out. So fantastic, fantastic to see a government supporting our city. And, uh, sir, we know that we are seeing some great advances in this, in education and in health. I'm glad they've woken up. You know, it's going to be dinner time soon. They can have the dinner and go back to sleep. Sir, we are going to see a fantastic uh, increase in the ability for people in the health sector to access specialist care via ultra-fast broadband. We know, sir, that those places that are way away away from some of the uh, some, <laughs> from some of the opportunities, Lord, uh, some of those opportunities are going to be enhanced in a major way. So, sir, it's great to see, and I think that. I think that, just in closing, last year, September, we had the uh, Australian uh, Broadband Committee come and visit, and the uh, Commerce Select Committee, which I chair, hosted them, and uh, they came to look at what we were doing. They came to see what we were doing, and they commented that they felt that we had a really good way of putting it together, which was a public and a private partnership. And uh, we know, sir, from all of that, that we are seeing that New Zealand is ahead of the game compared to our uh, Australian compatriots. Uh, their original cost was estimated to be around about $33 billion. Some analysts are now projecting that it's going to cost around $94 billion, where we have capped our government rollout costs at $1.35 billion. And we are ahead, sir, in so many ways, and we are going to see uh, some tremendous advances, and we are beginning to see it already, as schools, as hospitals, as businesses and private homes are connected to this ultra-fast broadband. It's making the difference in so many different ways, and this government is doing it. Uh, we return to 10-minute calls. Uh, Darian Fenton. Oh, thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Well, I must say I feel sorry for the National Party.